I'm Michelle. We're talking about crowdfunding games that you should back or not back, depending on where your money, wallet, and preference is this week. Three awesome ones from the get-go. I'm going to lead with one that you're not expecting. You all expect me probably to start with Deceased, the zombie side DC, you know, Marvel equivalent game. Well, guess what? I'm not starting with that one because I have one that I'm even more hyped up for than that in the first place because I don't even have my Marvel one because, oh, all of a sudden we have four containers this and four containers that and I'm always last to get my packages anyway. So I'll probably have it three months from now by the time everyone has their reviews out because that's how shipping and CMON and everything else goes nowadays, right? So you know what? If you're not first, you're last, right? As always, second or third best, Legion Games, let's do this. What's the game I'm most excited for though and so ramped up for? Bullet, level 99 games. If you missed the news video in the earlier week, I said level 99 games all of a sudden had a little controversy. We're not going to market this game. We're not going to do paid previews. We're not going to do paid ads on things like Facebook, where you can pay for banners or random ads that no one ever clicks on or board game geek ads that no one ever clicks on. Although some people must, because again, I would hope that people would be paying for stuff that actually doesn't work. But again, people always argue, well, I don't want to see all the preview content. I hate shills who are getting paid for this. I don't really care. I don't really care. We're going full heel on this one in case you missed yesterday's video, right? Wrestling heel persona this week. So that is what's going on. The only question is going to be for people like me who are bullet lovers. Bullet is a top five game for me all time, people. Top five game. Love this game. Never done a full review on it. I should really get that loaded and pushed out because I love talking about it. It's like that and Spirit Island and The Loop. Like I will talk about those games ad nauseum. This is adding two new expansion character boxes. One is like all cats or animals and the other is female heroines. And I'm all for it. This is an amazing, amazing game. Best real-time game that is out there. Solo, cooperative, competitive, with a boss mode thrown in there in the cooperative. I love it. It doesn't get any better. I'll fight you in the comment section. This is an amazing game. Period. Yeah, I have the deluxe wooden bullets to go along with it because I was an original backer on the first crowdfunding campaign. I picked up Orange. I picked up Star. I picked up the two promos that they offered from their website the second they dropped. And so you know what? I'm going to have all of this in my collection at some point. The only question is, again, why on crowdfunding? With the previous stuff that we saw with the Exceed stuff, well, they did some acrylics. They did some playmats. And so I'm guessing there's going to be a little of this, a little foils, a little promo. I don't know. It's going to be a hard for me not to back. As much as I want to save a little bit of money, I also just want it in my collection. This is one of those games where I have a blind spot for. I'm going to own it all. I don't care what it is, what it looks like. It's just boom. And we all have one or two of those games, right? We all have one or two of those. You have one or two of those. You know what they are, right? Well, let's talk about one of their two of those. Because it seems like Zombie Side is the other one or two for a lot of those people. Do you have a Zombie Side? You don't need another Zombie Side. You don't need another Zombie Side. There is no way on God's green earth you need more than one copy of a Zombie Side. If you get another copy of a zombie side, sell your previous one because it's going to be better. It's going to be different. It's going to be the same. I don't know. Marvel. I mean, now they're flipping over to the DC. The, the best thing that can come out of this, the best thing that's going to come out of this is one, there's not going to be a freaking Galactus miniature. And if there is anything like that size wise, I'm going to be a little bit pissed and you can guarantee I'm going to rant on it. Secondly, the best thing that's actually going to come out of it is the fact that I'm hoping that it has nothing to do with this product, right? It's going to be, there's going to be a DC United. A DC United as opposed to Marvel United. And guess what? If you got something like that, I bet you can forking incorporate both of them. I mean, you saw the massive darkness zombie side splits and crossovers already. You saw the Arcadia Quest crossovers. Boom! Perfect for that as well. I mean, what else do you need to know? I mean, it's about the anti-life equation. If you're not familiar with the anti-life equation, basically what Dark Side is like the super bad of, you know, the Thanos of the DC world, if you will. And he manipulates Cyborg into creating this anti-life equation that's like part machine, part like, you know, just virus. And so then it spreads throughout all the humans on Earth and it basically makes them all zombies and it turns half the heroes into stuff. And then the heroes are fighting heroes, the heroes are fighting villains, uh, the villains are fighting the heroes, you know, everything like that, right? And so basically you're taking your zombie side theme and smashing it in with that at the same time. And so it's just going to be, if you're not familiar with some of the comic that, that, that came out with it, uh, you know, who's on what side and where timing wise do they have it? Because a lot of the heroes die actually in the comic book. There's very few that actually survive. So uh, that's very thematically incorporated, but I'm guaranteeing that the board game itself is not going to be as dark as that. So we're going to see, okay, what they've got in store with this. Because you also, you know, with Zombie Side and you know with Simon, you're going to get about four or five literal expansions with it. And that's maybe even just talking about gameplay expansions, let alone playmats 
Act or deluxe tokens or cardboard whatevers, or you know what I'm talking about, right? Like upgrades, superfluous deluxification upgrades that are going to change your pledge by upwards of easily $100 by the time it's over. And I've never really bought any of those. But again, like I don't even have my Marvel Zombie side. So I might just sell my Marvel Zombie side and get the DC one. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. I am more of a Marvel person than a DC. Always have been, always will be. You know, Batman's going to be on the good side. Superman's on the bad side. Um, you know, a couple of the others get turned in the mid-comic, but you don't need to care about that. You don't know about that. The real exciting thing, though, for you DC junkies, though, is that this is potentially going to reach deep into the pocketbooks. No, just kidding. Not your pocketbooks, but the pockets of DC in the first place if they do anything like they did with Marvel and actually give you some freaking good content of heroes and villains that might not just be the ones that, you know... Are immediately roll off the tongue. And that's probably the best thing about something like Marvel United or Marvel Zombies is you see some more depth of characters. I'm not gonna say depth of gameplay, that's a whole different avenue as a whole. And if they continue their trend, I give Simon usually a little bit more kudos than some of the other bigger companies because they are pretty upfront about actually nowadays, not way back when, but more recently of having the rule book up during the campaign, it better be up on day one. They're probably gonna drag their feet though. Again, like, I don't know how you can't have something like that up. And I feel like nowadays, if big campaigns don't have something up like that at the beginning, it's because they don't want people to read it and be turned off, not because it's not done. The more you know. And so that's why it's going to be a very interesting test. But the other interesting test is you're going to compare it head to head, not only from a content, from a gameplay, but also from a cha-ching. And that's going to be the big test. Is Marvel as appealing as Dice Throne? Is Marvel more or less appealing to people than DC? We've seen Marvel saturation. I've seen people talk about Marvel saturation everywhere, even with Dice Throne. I mean, that's a whole nother toxic community conversation as a whole. But people just saturated and just feeling, you know, kind of burnt out from Marvel, not only on the movie side, but the game side as well. You know, you see this, 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 you know, Marvel Age of Superheroes, uh, the, you know, the FFG game, you've got the Dice Throne, you've got the zombie sides, you've got, you know, a couple others, you've got Splendor, you know, all over the place, right? Uno, but is DC, you know, actually that wanted? I don't have a clue. I mean, their box office suggests otherwise, but sorry, that was a low blow there it's there but just like marvel right now part of the fatigue is that especially in the marvel comic universe movie show side of things it's just it's turning into crap it's turning into low ball not well written not well put together stuff they're just throwing out okay hey guys we can have some people will pay whoops swore in my video there we can half a double s this you know if you will i had to edit that out i don't swear in my videos i truly try not to so we retook that with film comment right there so that's what the Marvel has put out recently. And so as long as you don't do that, I think zombie side in the DC skin is going to do really, really well. Is it going to do Marvel? Well, no, it's not. But if this doesn't raise at least like 5 million, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. And that's enough of a rant over DC zombie side, if you will, because the third game coming this week, I launched my video earlier in the week as well on Thursday, Singularity. This is in the line of your Yomi's Battlecon succeeds. And this is a really good game. I really like this game. You take five heroes on each side, three are active at a time. You can swap one of them per turn as a substitute in and out. Each of them only has three powers. Chris, that doesn't sound very cool at all. Well, the three powers, well, there's only one on top. And if you play that power, if you utilize it, it goes to the bottom of the stack. And then the next one is available for turn right then and there. And it's got the Summoner's vibe of the energy where you only get one per turn on the first turn, then you get two on the second turn, and then you get three on the third turn, and you get four. And so it slowly escalates up. So your comboing, your ramifications are going across the board and how you're utilizing that meta as well as the dynamics of your interpersonal asymmetric teams is gonna be really awesome. You can deck construct a little bit if you want. There's gonna be a little bit of campaign as well as a solo, but really this is a head-to-head -head dueler of the ilk that I love. I'm biased, what can I say? Um, prototype right here check out my video from earlier this week that's all you nearly need to know that it's got my endorsement right now so i hope it does really awesome i have no idea right like exceed like a battle con coming around again a yomi i don't know those uh tend to get lost in the shuffle sometimes and they're not everyone's ilk these other two are going to be more widely mass appealing. I believe the level 99 games going back to that for a second has actually said that bullet is by far their all-time bestseller not just me right i'm a shill but you know not too much of a shill at the same time. I'm totally a shill. I just like that word now.
You know what? And we'll tie it in right here at the end here because I don't even know. I talked about it last week. Where the freaking deuce is Nemesis Retaliation? Uh, you know what? They're maybe going to go because, again, we haven't seen an embargo lifted. We haven't seen any comments on the board game before and we haven't seen any Awaken Realms emails that, you know, it's going to be maybe the very, very last week of November. I wouldn't be surprised if Awaken Realms tries to fit it in uh, slowly, sneakily after Thanksgiving when everyone's full of trip defense still and their wallets are fat and they've got all extra time to burn and money to burn with nothing else going on, including work. So that wouldn't shock me. And they don't, they're over in Europe. So they don't care about our Thanksgiving in North America, which is completely fine. I just did a couple days off for it. So that's cool. But that's lurking. Is it going to ever launch? Who knows? We'll see. That's okay, though. I'm working on their Tamashi game. We'll talk about that later, though. And we're not even we're not even done. I'm sorry. I, you know, have plenty of other games to talk about. Ahoy, the four player, four faction asymmetric game from Leader Games that kind of went to retail and got like a Gen Con release and kind of like dipped down immediately after. Well, again, I don't see it as a bad game, but it just the hype didn't all of a sudden match what people want. I don't know, like if they wanted Root or they wanted something different. I haven't had a chance to play it. It's a more accessible version of Root, but I don't think people like the factions nearly as much as they did the Root ones. And so, but they are actually coming out with a new expansion over on Backer Kit of all things. Um, uh, on the 14th as well called new horizons which is going to give you four more factions which is going to be from one of the designers of root and some of the factions there as well as from the base game a little bit um and we're going to see what they've got entailing there again i have no idea what the <sighs> market is for this i don't know if ahoy is really that well thought of if leader um is really going to get that much over support on backer kit i don't really know what backer kit is going to entail and bring in you know backer kit doesn't even have the game found traffic so, you know, unless you're, you know, greater than games launching Spirit Island or Restoration Games launching some of their hugest projects ever as well, uh, Backer Kit has really been kind of mum. You know, Molly House is over there right now, but everything else is few and far between, and it really hasn't been very impressive. And I really don't like the page setups and these non-stretch goals, stretch goals sort of situations that they do as well. Again, nothing, not, not talking about leader games at all, but Backer Kit just, you know, again, needs a lot of work from a, just getting general public, general views in as a whole. So uh, we'll see what they do and we'll see how it kind of fares when it launches. And then, of course, I have a copy of it. I'll have a video out either tomorrow or the next day on Monday. I'm talking about Fire Siege for Al's story, which is a cooperative uh, one to five player, I believe, one to five player, uh, tower defense style game. You are fending off the enemies, which is a near infinite pool, trying to get your objectives done uh, before slowly being overwhelmed by before the end of the game. The tricky point and the sticking point with this game as a whole, as I covered it at the beginning of the month, is that you're going to have double-sided cards, and these cards are going to be very unique, and they're going to be able to be done and seen by only one side when you choose to play them. You're going to be choosing your side, but you don't see the bad guy side as you're choosing it. The other players at the table are going to see it, and so how you dynamically choose these may be based off the reactions of the players around you, but again, how much table talk can you deal with, how much table talk do you like in that sense, and how much alpha gaming can go on with this, but the truth of the matter is we haven't had a lot of good tower defense style games as a whole. Kingdom Rush was kind of an okay one, but it was more of a min-max style, especially the first time around i'm not sure how the second one fared but this is going to be another test of that market in the besiege style simon as well with just sort of okay get your stuff done stop the overwhelming hordes from you know literally overrunning you and achieve your objectives because you're not gonna be able to win but you're gonna be able to mitigate it and stand or hopefully hold off the tide until the game ends and so this one is going to be a really interesting test as well because it's going to be miniature based and what is the price point going to look like what is the final product going to look like what does that all entail i think it's a really cool concept we'll see how the execution and how it does especially when you're going up a lot of these other games that are launching simultaneously uh, this week as well there's two other games that we're going to talk about really briefly wasabi from kids table board game is the remake of the original wasabi where it's more of a set collection style of making your recipes of your fish rice dishes in the first place is getting a reprint, retheme, reincorporation of some of the new mechanics that are going along with it. I'm still waiting for my copy of Maple Valley, which, you know, should be here anytime. Hopefully, I don't have a clue. Again, like shipping is always off all over the place, you know. Like I said, I just got my 20 strong in the mail, didn't even get the, you know, shipping for that. Who knows where Marble Zombie side is? I just got a different one in the mail today that I didn't, I, you know, it just, whatever. But that's what we're kind of waiting for. And with Kids Table Board Games, you know, it's going to be a little bit nicer price point as well. It's going to be a little bit of offering extra in terms of deluxifications as well as little bit of gameplay content uh, alongside of things so uh i have no idea i've never played the original wasabi it really wasn't on my radar except i knew it was a game and so i don't really have the hugest incentive but i know that there are other pedigrees of the maple valley of the creature comforts of that style with power plants as well it has been relatively well received and relatively well funded somewhere in the one to three hundred thousands overall so i wouldn't be surprised if you see very similar in this sense but again i don't know if the market for something like this being redone is there as well they're definitely staying with the food ones because again their more recent release at retail was diced veggies that came out at the recent convention and that's been relatively well received for a lighter family style kids game as well 
The last weapon we'll talk about here as well is called Wish, where you're basically jinns and you have magical abilities that allow you to uh, fulfill wishes of the human desire, anywhere from love to revenge, wealth and cheer and disappointment across the board. And so you're going to be gradually fulfilling these wish cards in order to gain victory points by the end of the game, as well as amassing crystals that allow you to match to the wishing people in the first place, constructing monuments and, and navigating destiny cards. I have no idea what this is going to entail, what this is going to look like. Um, market, end game bonus, area movement. Uh, hidden victory point style mechanisms going on but again it could be a little bit of a nice sleeper hit it could be a little bit of a lighter nice play style game i have no idea what to expect with this one it's going to be lighter regardless though because the weight right now is registering about a 2.0 on board game geek which is fine i like this style as a whole that plays in 40 to 60 minutes but again what's the incentive uh new company silver bowl games and we'll see kind of what they bring to the table uh literally and figuratively speaking when it launches as well on the 14th so that's what we've got going on this upcoming week and now you can see why i'm so excited and I'm so ramped up and somehow i'm apparently losing my voice because i talked too loud for too long in this one single video so what else has been going on? Well, I got a couple of review copies, a couple uh, backed copies this week of games, uh, including 20 Strong, Chip Theory solo game, solo card style game. So we'll see how that goes. I have no idea how I'm going to feel about that one. So that was my big uh, Kickstarter or crowdfunding arrival this week. And then also I've just been watching a little bit of stuff, a little bit of K-drama. It's not anything terribly great. Uh, I watched the Netflix series Bodies. I'm watching the other one about the Blue Eyed Samurai. I mean... Both are kind of okay. Neither of them are outstanding. People are like writing on the Rotten Tomatoes of Blue-Eyed Samurai. It's the best animated thing Netflix has ever done. And I'm like, well, the, the bar is kind of low for that in general, but I mean, it's it's fine. But it's also like it's a little bit too gratuitous for the sake of gratuity. Like it's never something I'm going to tell my kids to watch. And frankly speaking, um, I just kind of see want to see how it ends because a lot of the ports, a lot of the parts in between have not really been that appealing overall. Again, gratuity for the sake of gratuity, that's some in some parts. And that just turns me off at some point as I'm getting older as well. And you know what? Old man shouting at the clouds, old man shouting at the clouds from his lawn. So we'll take it for what it is as well. I have no plans this weekend. Um, kids going out to uh, dinner movie theater with my wife, like theater theater, not like movie theater. Uh, so that's going on and I'm watching the other ones. Uh, we have really no other plans apart from that. I need to get my Tomashi uh, video review filmed on that side of things. Like I said earlier, I mean, I need to do bullet review eventually as well, just because it's an amazing game and I just love talking about it as a whole. I'm trying to look and see what else is around, but I think all the other new stuff is still sitting out there. Uh, one of the Valeria games, Shadows, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, I believe, Shadows of Valeria, whatever one has that in the name of it, that one came as well. And so we're going to just be kind of going through a little bit of that in addition. Um... There's one or two other games that I'm completely blanking on that I'll be, you know, hopefully talking about more in the near future here. Um, but that's about it. Like I said, Fire Siege, that review will either be out tomorrow or Monday in anticipation of the campaign launching on Tuesday. And we'll kind of see how those other ones go. I'm really intrigued. I have no clue what the funding uh, is going to look like of any of these, right? Except for like the zombie side. It's probably going to be seven figures and probably mid seven figures as a whole. But again, if you had told me the over under was, you know, four million, I'd say I have no idea where that's going to be because I have no idea what the interest on uh DC is and again sort of like a uh, bullet and uh guards of atlantis 2 like guards of atlantis 2 is acclaimed right highly highly acclaimed but it's not for everybody and so the funding wasn't nearly as high as you would have thought initially based on the hype and the people that loved it like myself but that's okay because you know my biggest uh takeaway always whether it's you watching one of my reviews or any of my videos that i'm talking about games in the first place is buy games that you like don't buy games that i like don't buy games that get highly rated from other people don't buy games that get you know stamps or signatures or seals of whatever from everybody else right um because again that's a weird side note here we'll talk about that right now for a second since it's on my mind i feel like everybody nowadays is getting their own little logo or seal of approval seal of excellence seal of whatever right and i the more and more i think about it you know one i'd love to have one at the same time i've really recognized that a lot of what that is is marketing again and i don't say that as a bad thing i say that as a neutral statement of fact right it's a neutral marketing thing to get your name your brand your side of things out there for people to recognize so uh, it's very interesting to think about it from that aspect and you start thinking about now um, how it's utilized across the board and I, I don't I'm not even talking about board games but just other things too so uh, it just got me thinking for a while I don't know uh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble anyway if I keep talking about that I'm gonna dig my hole even deeper um, but no way I'm supposed to right 
I got to get everybody to hate me. That's what my new wrestling heel persona is, right? In case you're not familiar with wrestling, and I mentioned it earlier, right? There's, in wrestling, there is the good guys and the bad guys, but they're called faces and heels. And so the good guys playing to the crowd, uh, getting them to back them, getting them to support them, the heels doing despicable, nefarious things and, you know, cheating and, you know, getting the crowd to hate them and boo them. And really, realistically, I mean, if you're good on either side of things, you get engagement, right? People think of, oh, you know, getting booed as a bad thing. No, folks, getting no reaction is a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going for that whatsoever because I'm really not. I'm being tongue in cheek here with all this stuff, but it's just an interesting, fascinating topic because I feel like, especially nowadays and especially some of the interactions I've had recently online as well as recently in the past, that's no different than real life. You, you see those people at your work. You see those people at your job. You see those people um, at your church, at your community uh, events, whatever it may be, right? And so, again, from my side of things, it's exactly the same. There are some really good people, and there are some people that are not what they seem as well. And so it's just an interesting spread of what happens. And I'm digging myself into a digging beer hole as I talk, and the more I realize that. So I'm going to cut myself off before I really dig this hole even deeper than it already is but there are some also we'll, 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 we'll end this on a positive there are some really amazing really fun people really uh people that are willing to engage and talk and they just have a good time and i've connected with a few of those people as well and i really appreciate those even more so um because inevitably if you do this or you do anything in online or anything comment wise or anything interaction wise as a whole um or even in real life right you get those yearly evaluations and it, it's not the positive comments from you know the customers or the consumers or whoever right that you remember you get like 10 of those right and they will go in and out of one year this is human nature right but it's the one negative that sticks with you and sticks in here and digs and digs and digs and that's a mental health issue as a whole so that's also why we need to talk about this stuff because everybody has it everybody goes through it and everybody is sick of me rambling on at the end of here of this video so we'll be done have a great freaking day play something awesome don't back anything that you don't love uh, and just have a great day and thank you for subscribing in the first place if you somehow made it this part of the video and you didn't get turned off by everything else i said that was horrible previously that's all it. i'm done peace out stay classy have a great day